As we mentioned before, we're going to talk about some of the Linux features that play a major role in how popular and flexible Linux can be. We've also mentioned the ability for multi-user. In the early days of operating systems, most of the time you could only have a single user logged on. Well, early in the game, Linux was able to develop a system that allowed multiple users or multiple consoles to run side by side, in effect sharing the hardware. And coming along with the multi-user is, of course, the multitasking, giving us the ability to run a spreadsheet or email program and browse the Internet all at the same time. I know we all take that for granted now, but in the early development days of Linux, this was definitely a difficult feature to come by. Another one of the top features that makes Linux so popular in the IT community is that it is considered secure. Now, it's been a long time standing that Linux is, for the most part, considered more secure than Microsoft Windows. And I think the biggest reason for this is that Linux has been such a small market share that it makes more sense to develop viruses and hacks for the Microsoft operating system because you're much more likely to find those in places you might be browsing. But as Linux is becoming more and more popular, that security might wary just a little bit. So it's secure at the moment simply because it's less popular than the Microsoft Windows platform and all of the vulnerabilities that are out there for Microsoft don't affect Linux. So you hear about all these virus outbreaks and all of these different hacks coming out, most of them are not going to affect Linux. Now as we mentioned before, the variety of compatible software is definitely an important feature. And the reason that that has come available to us is simply because of the fan base of the Linux operating system. You know, people realize that it's free, and they say, well, you know, I'll spend some time developing some software for this. And they do, and they share that with the community. Whereas in the Microsoft environment, you see individual software developers develop their software for a specific Microsoft version, such as Windows 2000 or Windows XP, and sell that for a significant amount of money. The problem you run into there is it limits the market on the different variations of that because of copyright protection and things of that nature. But in the Linux environment, you don't have any of that. Everything is considered open source, meaning that you develop the application if you're a developer and you post it out there and say, you know what, anybody that wants to download this and use it is free to do so. You're free to distribute it or sell it or even modify it and repackage your own version you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find a major software vendor that will allow you to do that on the Microsoft Windows platform. So that's one of the reasons that the software base has expanded to the amount that it has in the Linux environment. As we mentioned, the cost or how inexpensive Linux is. Now, there are distributions that are going to be pay-by-use basis such as SUSE Linux, which is developed by Novell, can cost you anywhere from 60 to $80 for a desktop Linux distribution. Now, because it is released under the GNU, that allows you to modify it if necessary, or make any kind of changes, redistribute it, those type of things. But most of the times, your companies are going to lean more toward that free operating system, things like the older versions of Red Hat or the newer versions of Fedora Core. So that reduces, like I mentioned before, the total cost of ownership. And the reason that that's important for companies is they want to be able to have a good, stable, supported platform that they don't have to keep paying for over and over, such as upgrading the operating system every few years. So in reducing that total cost of ownership, it makes Linux a very appealing solution. Now, because Linux has become so popular, people have found many different uses for it. And most Linux distributions support various types of installations. And really the difference between a desktop graphics install or a workstation install, etc., is going to be the actual packages installed. The Linux operating system itself will remain unchanged in the background. So you can manipulate what software comes with the system. And you do that based on the role that that particular machine is going to play. Now, another major benefit of the Linux operating system is its support for older hardware. Because Linux has been developed for so many years and by so many different people, 
People have found needs to run Linux on many different things. They're even running Linux on cell phones and other various oddball hardware components, in addition to older computers. So you couldn't install Windows XP on a 133 megahertz system with 32 meg RAM and imagine it to run properly. Whereas there are many Linux distributions out there that would run very well on that level of hardware. So the ability to run on that what we consider to be legacy hardware is extremely valuable to us. Now because the command line interface with a CLI is somewhat familiar to some of the older DOS components and DOS commands, it's usually a pretty easy transition to make from a DOS user to a command line user. And in addition, a lot of the Linux distributions have been created with a graphical user interface that can be configured to be similar to the Microsoft Windows environment. So that makes a pretty easy transition for our users in the field so that they don't have a huge learning curve. Now the stability of Linux has been one of the key features that they've bragged about for many years. And for the most part, it's developed with stability in mind. The wide developer support is another huge feature that is beneficial to us, essentially because if there's a particular piece of hardware out there, you can bet somebody else has had the need for support and has probably developed a product that works. And that also goes for software and the back-end kernel development and pretty much anything you can imagine. I mean, there are even proprietary ROM-based devices that support Linux kernels because somebody had a need for it and wrote the code. In addition, it's different from Windows because it uses non-proprietary standards. For example, a lot of the Microsoft Windows network communication uses proprietary standards such as server message block that allows it to only communicate with other Windows devices. Well, Linux supports those proprietary standards in addition to industry standards that are useful across all platforms.